2024 is going to bring a ton of growth to Art House ABB. And today, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the techniques and strategies that we're going to be integrating into our business to drive that growth. Our goals this year are simple but big. First, we want to expand our portfolio. This means increasing the number of units that we're operating by at least 30%. We also want to expand more into commercial hosting space, more boutique hotels. And finally, we have a goal to own more properties. The rental arbitrage and management or co-hosting methods have been excellent foundations. They've also helped create a pretty clear path for more real estate ownership. The first thing we're gonna be up focusing on this year in order to achieve those goals is increasing our market presence. This means onboarding more units, hosting more properties, and entering new and unique rental sectors like boutique hotels. We're also going to be putting a lot more time into improving operations, which means making it easier for the team to do the work that has to be done. Automation and AI is going to be a big part of that. Using platforms like ChatGPT will let us do simple tasks more quickly and with much less brain power. A perfect example of this is the onboarding process, specifically building out the listing profile. Although easy, this task typically takes a lot of time for a person to complete. They have to do research on the property, they have to look up nearby stuff like restaurants, shops, eateries, popular attractions, and even activities. With AI, we can do this with the stroke of a few keys and in a lot less time. Freeing up this time reduces workload on the team and it allows them to focus on more important tasks. To increase exposure, we're also focused a lot more on marketing as well as networking. As you get started with your business, you're gonna meet new people and build relationships. You'll realize just how valuable your services are. In building your network, you'll realize one of your most critical tools to scaling is the people around you. Now, another way for us to get the most out of our growth opportunities is to take advantage of the feedback we've gotten from our network. We serve a very particular guest and customer. Over the years, we've listened to feedback from our partners, guests, and clients, and have made it a priority to review and address that feedback regularly. This is one of the biggest strengths. We listen to what our customers want and need, and then, if it makes sense, we figure out a way to give it to them. In terms of growth drivers, our uniqueness is probably the biggest growth driver we have. We have artists and creative people who know just how to talk to and service other creatives. Our ability to speak to our guests and clientele effectively sets us apart from the competition. As a business owner, you must be driven to set yourself apart in order to grow and expand. This means being at the forefront of setting the business goals all the while keeping your team in the loop. If you don't have a team yet, that's fine, but write those goals down and review them often. Goal setting is one of, if not the most important source of motivation through all the work that has to get done. But you also have to make sure that things are going according to plan. I always monitor business performance to ensure operations are running smoothly. Doing so helps give me peace of mind that the ship is running tight and in the best way it can. Monitoring also helps me stay aware of incoming challenges and risks. For example, a big threat to our growth plans is inappropriately used time. Time is something that we can't ever get back, so it's important to stay aware of things that might be eating up too much time in the business. Is cleaning taking too long because you don't have enough cleaners to help? Are maintenance issues causing too much downtime or negatively impacting guest experiences? If there's a process that's creating a bottleneck in your operations or a pain point for the team, performance monitoring allows me to identify and address it. This way, I can quickly fix issues before they eat up too much time and delay us from reaching our growth goals. In order to determine whether or not there are any issues and choose a goal to work towards, we're also going to be putting a heavy emphasis on guest feedback. You ever heard of a saying that a closed mouth doesn't get fed? Well, it's true, especially when it comes to getting feedback. After a guest stay at one of our properties, we literally ask each and every one of them to tell us how we can improve. This simple question continues to serve as one of the most powerful tools we have to get better. We know this for sure, because it usually helps us decide which amenities we're going to implement into our properties. One amenity that we plan to make available across all of our properties are board games. Board games are a really great draw because they bring people together and a lot of people like them. They're usually a lot of fun and they create experiences on their own. The best thing about this amenity is that they don't cost a lot of money or time to implement. And honestly, when it comes to guest satisfaction, the details matter. Some of the most satisfied and loyal guests that we earn 
comes from those who recognize that we care about the details. The reason this mindset helps to establish loyalty is because the industry is full of a bunch of businesses that don't pay attention to the details. So when a business does, it's a pleasant and welcoming experience. And if you know anything about hospitality and hosting, you know that people want pleasant and welcoming experiences all the time. One way to create a more pleasant and welcoming experience for guests is to include amenities that target remote workers. The reason being is that remote workers are probably the demographic that uses both short-term and mid-term rentals the most these days. The industry really boomed during the pandemic and now remote work is kind of sticking around for the long run. This is one of the main reasons that our goal is to grow our portfolio with these travelers in mind. We've updated our listings to focus on giving these travelers a consistently comfortable experience. Fast Wi-Fi, desks, cozy areas to work in the home are an absolute lust. We've learned a new customer avatar, which will increase marketability of our portfolio and help with the expansion over time. Hey, by the way, if this video has helped you at all so far, then make sure you check out some of the other videos to learn about everything from where to put your short-term rental to how you can design an unforgettable Airbnb. But make sure you stay tuned because you're gonna learn the course of action we're gonna take as well as how we plan to stay on track. I've said this before, feedback is everything. Well, not really, but almost. It's truly one of the best ways to make improvements over time, both in operations and the guest experience. Your team, guests, clients are all customers that you work with. As customers, they're likely willing to give you some feedback if you ask them. Great or small, the feedback is useful in helping you better understand what's working well and what isn't working so well with your customers. The best feedback comes when you're trying something new. When you first implement something, use feedback to determine if there are any adjustments that need to be made. Doing this helps to ensure that the change or the updates you've made are implemented successfully. Listening to feedback from those around you is also really helpful for keeping track of what's going on in your business. You have to keep track of what's going on in your business if you wanna succeed. If you don't know what's going on in your business, it's the fastest way to overspend, lose money, and fail. I love performance monitoring because it's an effective way to get the information I need to make decisions and fast. For example, I know that our most expensive overhead costs come from cleaning and turnovers. Knowing this, I'm always evaluating our cleaning processes to determine if there are any bottlenecks or issues that might be causing us more money than we should be spending. This is an example of something that ties directly into our plan for the year and is going to help us stay on track as we scale. Another thing that we're gonna to need to focus on in order to grow is who we hire. To hit growth goals this year, we're going to need some help. Starting at the foundation of operations, our cleaning team is gonna to have to grow pretty quickly to support the portfolio. Also, to support a lot of the technical components of operations like maintenance and supply orders, we're bringing on a few virtual assistants to help out. Virtual assistants are a great hiring strategy because they are usually very highly skilled talent who provide services and support at an affordable cost. In offboarding some of the technical tasks to a virtual assistant, we can save time on our team and prioritize more significant work. In order to ensure that everybody stays on track, we're going to be monitoring what are called key performance indicators. Key performance indicators are monitoring tools that let you hone in on certain areas of performance in the business. One indicator might look at rental occupancy over a period of time. If occupancy dips or falls too low, as in lower than the market average, a performance indicator will let you know, and usually by highlighting the issue in some sort of report or data point. There are all types of performance indicators. Business owners have the important job of customizing them and determining which are the most critical to success. So build and leverage these tools in smart ways to ensure you always have insight on what's going on in your business. I'm always paying close attention to see what things need to be tweaked. If bookings slow down or ratings start to dip, it's for a reason and likely means that something somewhere needs immediate attention. Don't be afraid to make changes or pivot to plan B. You will need to in order to keep pace with the market and adapt when necessary. But what if you don't have the funds to invest in a full-size property to get your short or midterm rental business started? What if you have enough to get a property, but you don't have enough to renovate it? And how do you turn a profit if you have to spend a ton of money just to buy the asset? Well, 
The truth is, you don't. And it's possible to get started in short-term or mid-term rental hosting without a whole lot of startup capital. And if you wanna learn how to do it, then click on the video that's on the screen now.